Today, um, from the seat of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that I want to highlight is a lot of times we don't know there's a situation. Imagine you're in a, in a position of leadership. Or let's just say you're in a situation of a community. And there's a, there's a situation that's escalating. Many times, we might put more fuel to that fire and it grows. The conflict grows. The situation grows. Or what we learn from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and what he did was he would always de-escalate any kind of situation where it can bring the entire community apart. Or if there was even an internal issue or a personal issue and he saw that by magnifying it, there was no need to do that, then he would just let it go and he would not magnify the situation. Today, to help us understand that how did Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam not magnify situations. Today, inshallah, I want to share with you two stories that we can learn from the seerah of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. The first story happens to be connected with the surah I just read in Satur Aisha. What surah did I read in Aisha? Anyone know? Your, what were you thinking about dinner? Or your grocery list? What surah did I recite in Aisha? Surah Munafiqun. Jazakumullah khair. So, Surah Munafiqun, what's the story behind Surah Al-Munafiqun? And there was a, a conflict that arose between the Muhajir and the Ansar. And it was a very difficult time for Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But today, by covering this story, you will learn, inshaAllah, that we have to understand how to put, put aside the flames of conflict and how to de-escalate any kind of situation. Now, understanding that in this day and age, we have something that escalates even the smallest issue. You know what it's called? It's called social media, okay? The smallest thing, wallahi, you take the smallest issue and you would have someone sitting online typing behind the scenes and they can escalate any kind of situation. And that is why, wallahi, with, when it comes to social media, Social media, there's a lot of good things to social media, but social media also has given a platform to the most ignorant people on earth and given them the ability to write whatever they want and cause havoc in a society and in a community. So, the story is that on the way back from the expedition of Banu Al-Mustaliq, Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he camped. And the muhajir, you have the senior muhajirun, they send one of their young muhajir that go and get some water. The ansar, they send one of their young ansar to go and fetch, go get some water. Now these two young people, one muhajir, one ansar, they came to the well to get some water. And a conflict brewed amongst them. There, there's a conflict that happened between them. Now, first thing that we understand from this is, when it comes to younger people, they're filled with, you know, their hormones are jumping up and down. They're filled with so much energy and so forth. What we learn is that many times the younger people may cause a conflict. But in that situation, the elders, when you step in, you don't put more fuel to that conflict, but you try to suppress the situation. Because as adults, as seniors, as parents and so forth, we understand we should have a higher level of hikmah and wisdom. But a lot of times we see that the younger ones start a problem. And the, young, and the older ones will come in and they'll just magnify the situation. How often does it happen that kids are fighting? They're small. They're going to fight. They're going to have issues. But the parents come and they start fighting amongst themselves. So once again, you have two young people. One muhajir, one ansar. They come to the well, a situation arises. Now at that time, the muhajir calls the other muhajir that come and help me. The Ansari young man says to the Ansar, come and help me. And at that time, Abdullah bin Ubay, who was the leader of the munafiqun, he was traveling with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Now, it was a practice that the Prophet would take people like that with him too. Even though he knows that these are people who are toxic, in our community. These are people who are waiting to tear apart the, the unity of our community. Even yet, the Prophet ﷺ would bring these kind of people along with them. And the thing that we learn from this is that even though you may have toxic people in the community, you still cannot stop them from coming to the masjid. You can't stop them from being with the jama'ah. They want to be with the jama'ah. But at the same time, you make sure that they don't affect your jama'ah. So here, Abdullah bin Ubay saw an opening. Because he's a hypocrite. And a hypocrite at the end of the day is waiting. You know, like a lion when they wait for their prey. 
and, or a cheetah, when they're about to jump and, you know, uh, take their prey, they sit down and they wait and they wait. A hypocrite like Abdullah bin Ubay was doing the same exact thing, waiting for the perfect situation that he can cause some dissent in the community of the Prophet wasallam. And at that time, he sided with the Ansar. And he, because he was from Medina, the Ansar were from Medina. So he went to the, the people, the Ansar, and he goes, see, this is what you have done. This is because of your doing. You gave these people, the immigrant, the, 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 um, those, the muhajir, you gave them a home. You made Medina accessible to them and to the Prophet Sallallahu And you see, and he gave this expression basically that feed, you feed your dog and he will uh, eat you when he is starving. He gave these kind of examples, meaning that he's trying to give an example that the muhajir, astaghfirullah, are like dogs. You give them and then when they're starving, they will come right after you. So he's saying that you gave them a place in Medina. And at that time, he said something, which is highlighted in Surah Al-Munafiqoon. He says, Yaquluna, they said, لَإِن رَجَعْنَا إِلَى الْمَدِينَ When we go back to Medina, لَيُخْرِجَنَّ الْأَعَزُّ مِنْهَا الْأَذَلِ Those of us who are dignified, he's referring to himself as dignified, are going to remove those who are not dignified. Referring to who? The Muhajir and Rasulullah wasallam. Now at that time, while he's just brewing and he's getting everyone excited, at that time there was a young man by the name of Zayd ibn Arqam radiallahu ta'ala an. And he rushes to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this is what's going on. This is the man who's behind all this, all this conflict. He's the one that he could have, he could have de-escalated the situation, but he's escalating the situation behind the scenes. And at that time, Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu ta'ala an, he said, Ya Rasulullah, what do you think Umar will say? Ya Rasulullah, give me the permission. Just give me the green light and I'll take care of him for you. And the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, no, Umar. How would you want, would, would you want people to talk later on about Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that anyone who confronted or anyone who caused pain, the Prophet sallallahu would kill them? I don't want people to remember me in this manner. So he says, let him go. And perhaps we will have an Ansari person talk to him. So later on at that time, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam saw the situation is growing. The situation is escalating. Everyone is camping, everyone is talking about it. So what did he do? It was so hot and it was not the practice of the Prophet ﷺ to put his own muhajir and ansar in, the, in difficult situations. Though it was so hot, Rasulullah said, you know what? We all pack our bags and let's, let's continue our journey back to Medina. Now at that time, an ansari person came and he says, Ya Rasulullah, this is not your practice. I mean, traveling when it's so hot, we're so exhausted and so forth. And that time Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa he said, did you not hear what this, this Medina man said? What Abdullah bin Ubay said? He said, when we get back to Medina, we're going to get rid of these people from our city. And he's making all these claims. And he says, subhanAllah, he goes, this man said this thing about you, Ya Rasulullah. He goes, indeed, you are the one who is dignified and he is not dignified. And we will always stand by your side, Ya Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa Now during this time, Abdullah bin Ubay, he heard that this young child, Zayd ibn Arqam, went and he told Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa about his plans. And he came running. Abdullah bin Ubay comes running to the Prophet and he says, Ya Rasulullah, I promise I did not say anything. I promise I'm innocent. I did not do anything. I did not say anything. If you heard that child say something, he's a liar. And at that time, once again, the Prophet ﷺ, he's hearing all these different things. Here he has one child telling him one thing. Here you have the leader of the Munafiqun telling him something else. So the Prophet ﷺ, he remains silent. He did not say a single word. And which also teaches us a very powerful lesson that till you don't have all the facts, don't speak about anything. Rasulullah said, you know what, we just continue to travel. Now, at this time, even while everyone is traveling, coming back to Medina, and still there is some talk of what is going on between the Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum. Now the Prophet has a choice to make. Either let's camp, but if we camp, everyone's going to be sitting around, I'm basically putting more fuel to the fire, and I'm going to be giving the people the opportunity to talk more about the situation, and this conflict can grow. Or option number two is, let me walk my Sahaba, let me have them travel throughout the entire day, and let me exhaust them to a point that when we camp, they cannot even talk anymore. 
Rasulullah went with option number two because that was the only way to de-escalate the situation. So he traveled throughout the entire day and when night came, he stopped and the Sahaba, they say that when we stopped, we didn't have energy to talk to each other. As soon as we camped, we went to sleep right away because we were exhausted. And at that time, Rasulullah this was his way of de-escalating the situation. The next day they, uh, they arrived in Medina, everyone ba went back home. At that time, what came down? Surah Al-Munafiqun. The same surah was revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, affirming what? What Zayd ibn Arqam was saying. And that is when Rasulullah he calls Zayd ibn Arqam. Because many people, by the way, they began to tell the Prophet sallam that, you know, Abdullah bin Ubay is an adult. Zayd ibn Arqam is a child. Whose words would you take? A child or an adult? I mean, he's a kid. He probably forgot in, he probably heard something, narrating something else to you. He probably lost some information in the middle of all that. How can you believe a child? But when this surah subhanAllah was revealed, the Prophet called Zayd ibn Arqam and he said that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent down a revelation and affirming everything that you said. And at that time, the surah starts off as what? إِذَا جَاءَكَ الْمُنَافِقُونَ قَالُوا نَشْهَدُ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ اللَّهِ When the munafiqun come and they say that we testify that you are the Prophet of Allah, Allah says, وَاللَّهُ يَعْلَمْ إِنَّكَ لَرَسُولُ Allah already knows. Allah knows very well that you are the Prophet. You don't have to keep on testifying that he's the Prophet, he's the Prophet, he's the Prophet. Allah knows that he's a prophet. Wallahu yashhad. However, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does testify to the fact of what? Inna al-munafiqina lakadhibun. That the munafiqun are liars. So this is story number one. Um, so how the Prophet de-escalated a situation. Quickly story number two, inshallah, I'll make this quick. The Prophet sallam, he comes home. It is the night where it belongs or it is the turn of Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. The Prophet sallam comes, he lies down. He looks over to Aisha and he sees that perhaps she is sleeping. Aisha's radiallahu anha, our mother, her eyes were closed. And so the Prophet he got up, he put on his cloak and he went out. Now when Aisha woke up, she's wondering, where did the Prophet go? Did he go to some other wife's house? Where is he going and so forth? The books of history mentioned that there was a hint of jealousy that came into her heart. Where is Rasulullah going at this time of the night? So. She followed Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And what she saw was that the Prophet sallam is sitting in Baqir. And he's making dua for all the companions. It, there was a battle that had just taken place before. And many sahaba died. They were buried in Baqir. So he's making dua for them. And she sees from afar that not once but three times Rasulullah sallam, he raised his hands. And he made dua for the sahaba who were buried in Baqir. Then Rasulullah Sam he realizes that this is still the night that belongs to who? To Aisha radiallahu anha. I'm supposed to be with her. This is not, I'm not supposed to be generally here. So when Aisha radiallahu anha, she sees that the Prophet Sam is turning and he's coming. It is mentioned in the Shama'il of the Prophet Sallam that he was not a slow walker. He was a very brisk walker. He was a fast walker. So what happened was that when the Prophet is walking, he's walking pretty much at a fast pace. So Aisha turns around also walking at a fast pace. And then when she gets home, she, so she turns around, looks, and the Prophet is now like slightly jogging. So she's slightly jogging, coming back home. And she gets back home and she takes off whatever she had, her, her um, hijab, whatever, whatever she was wearing. She hanged it and she went back in bed. And she's like, you know, like our kids today, they're sitting on their phones. And as soon as you hear those steps, like, come here, stand here with me. So when the Prophet says, um, so you know like parents, when they're coming, the kids can hear, and then they put their phone away, you know, they, they act. You know, our, we know our kids very well. So Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha, she gets in bed again, but she's breathing very heavily. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa he comes and he says, Aisha, um, why are you breathing so heavily? And she says, Ya Rasulullah, it's nothing. You don't have to worry about anything. And he says that either you tell me or Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will send a revelation telling me exactly what's going on. So she says, Ya Rasulullah, you know, I thought you probably left. I mean, I thought you probably went to someone else's house. So I followed you. I, went, I saw that you went to Baqir. I came back and, you know, I, was, I saw you from afar and then I, you know, I saw you coming back. So I went back home. And the Prophet said that, you know, I saw a woman walking very fast in the dark. Was that you? 
And Aisha radiallahu anha said, yes, Ya Rasulullah, it was me, you know. And so the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam then said that, Oh Aisha, the reason I went was because Jibreel alayhi salam came to me very privately because you, you do not have some clothes, you're not fully covered. So Jibreel alayhi salam came to me very privately telling me, go to Baqir and make dua for those who are buried over there. And so I went over there and then he said, Ya Aisha, do you think the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam will be unfair to you? How, would, how can Rasulullah be unfair to his own wife? So once again, the Prophet is understanding Aisha where she's coming from. She understands the mindset of his own wife. And hence, he'd never escalate the situation. Now, think about this. If it was in our situation, many of us, we escalate any kind of situation. You understand? So let's try to adopt the sunnah of Rasulullah The akhlaq and the demeanor of Rasulullah Whenever the situation, learn how to de-escalate a situation. Understand your, family need, your family's needs and so forth. Understand the situation and then go about your situation. Inshallah, I ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to give us tawfiq. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala give us the ability to uh, bring in our life the understanding and the akhlaq and the demeanor of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Wa jazakumullah khair. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. إن المسلمين والمسلمات والمؤمنين والمؤمنات والقانتين والقانتات والصادقين والصادقات والصابرين والصابرات والخاشعين والخاشعات والخاشعين والخاشعات والمتصدقين والمتصدقات والصائمين والصائمات والحافظين فروجهم والحافظات والذاكرين الله كثيرا والذاكرات أعد الله لهم مغفرة وأجرا عظيما